Yes, class. Am I audible? So, Alan, Anush. Yes, Anushka, where were you? Actually, my exams have started, so I couldn't join the first few classes. Uh, on okay, Monday, okay. Physics exams, so this class I joined. This Monday you are having your physics physics exam. Yes. Ma okay, okay. Fine. So rest. Uh, your papers have they have started? No, physics is not the first one, no. No, ma'am. <laughs> okay. Z, uh, Z, one more thing. Z, I don't know what is happening to this link of OneNote. It's not getting shared. I'll just see because I want to share the link directly with you so that you can access to any of the lesson which you want to see. But I don't know why it's not getting shared, though. I had shared it in the group earlier as well. The things that have been added are not getting shared. As soon as it will, the link will be created. The link is actually not getting created. Once it will get created, I'll share it with you. Otherwise, if you need the videos, then let me know. Videos I'll sh I can share. But for the link of this one note, no, I'm having certain difficulties. So once it becomes the link gets generated, I'll share it. You find it. Yeah. Then who's there? Aryan, Mariam, Jehan. All right. Uh -huh uh yes class so in the last class we had started uh with a refraction till here we had completed that when light travels from denser to rarer it moves away from the normal and when the light travels from rarer to denser medium it moves towards normal anushka what was your syllabus for this uh exam uh ma'am i have the complete one the first book uh mm -hmm. and second book this chapter we are doing currently so this chapter is in the this chapter is also included. Ray of no, it's not there. It's not included. So complete first book. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Fine, class. Uh, let's do some more topics. Uh, yes, one question at least it's let's do. We didn't do any question based on Snell's law. So see, uh this question says what? This question basically says that a ray of light passes through a plane boundary separating two media whose refractive indices are given. So mu1 is what? 3 by 2. Mu2 that is given is 4 by 3. So this is what? This is the re refractive index that is provided, that is given. So refractive index is given. Now this says, uh, if ray of light travels from first medium to second medium, angle of incidence is 30 degrees. So what is angle of refraction? And the other part says, if ray travels from medium 2 to medium 1. So what will be the angle of refraction? So there will be certain difference because as we had seen through Snell's law that the ray of light in which it enters, that becomes the incident ray. So see, here also if I draw it for the first part, this is something like, this is the interface, this is the incident ray. This angle is 30 degree, it gets refracted. This is some unknown angle. Now, first medium is what? First medium is having refractive index three by two. Second is having refractive index four by three. This is mu one, this is mu two. Now light is entering from medium one to medium two. So what did we discuss? Best way to write Snell's law is take the refractive index of that medium, multiply it with the sign of angle that is given. If sine of angle, let's say this is 30 degrees. So write mu1 into sine 30. Whatever is the angle that is given to you, write it as it is. So refractive index multiplied by sine of angle is equal to refractive index multiplied by sine of angle. So here, 3 by 2 into sine 30 degree is equal to 4 by 3 into sine r. So from here, 3 by 2, this becomes half, which is equal to 4 by 3 into sine r. So sine r, we'll write this completely as 3 by 2 into half into 3 by 4. So this becomes 9 by 16. Right? So R comes out to be sine inverse 9 by 16. This is angle of refraction. 
Now, second part says everything, rest of the things or the data that is given to you, that remains same, that is fixed. But now what is happening? Ray is now entering from second medium to first one. Do you get this? It means C. Light enters from medium two to medium one. It means this arrow that I have drawn, this arrow will be reversed now. C. From here, this is the normal. Now this becomes the angle of incidence. And here it will be refracted the way it has to get refracted. Now medium one has the refractive index three by two, medium two has four by three. Now you will see angle of incidence is 30 degree. But now calculations will get interchanged. No. What did we discuss? The refractive index multiplied by sine of angle is equal to refractive index multiplied by sine of angle. And this will keep on going. So here as well, refractive index is three by two for the second part into sin r is equal to refractive index four by three into sine 30. So this becomes three by two into sin r is equal to four by three into half. This two, this two gets canceled. Sine r becomes four by nine. So r becomes sine inverse four by nine. This is just a question to teach us how to apply Snell's law. So best way to write Snell's law. See, if you can remember that formula which we have, sine i by sine r is equal to n2 by n1, then that is fine. If you are able to remember that formula, then it's fine. But sometimes it, become, it becomes confusing whether to write n1 first, when, whether to write n2 first, in which ray is entering, in which ray is leaving. So it's better, forget all these things, take the refractive index, multiply it with the sine of angle. Take the refractive index, multiply it by sine of angle and keep it equating like this. All right, note down the question and then note down the solution of it. Then we'll do two topics are there, part of refraction before we start with any other topic that we'll do. Two smaller topics are there which come in exam. Zed, your internet is fine now? Are you able to hear? Yeah, ma'am, it's fine now. Okay. Did you hear I was talking to you? Were you able to hear it? No, ma'am. Actually, Zed, I was saying you were asking, no, uh, the notes for the lessons that yeah, we had. Yeah. yeah. Actually, the link of this is not getting created. Somehow, I don't know whatever is the technical error that is arising. So as soon as the link will get created, I'll share the link directly because it will become easier. Otherwise, I don't have separate notes written, handwritten notes. Everything I write on the screen only, in this one note only. Okay, so fine. Robert. Yes, yes. Otherwise, you can take the uh, video lectures from me. From there, you can take the screenshots of the notes. Yeah, okay, fine. Ma'am? Yes, Anushka. Uh, Ma'am, for the previous classes that I didn't join for, where can I get the recording? I'll, I'll share with you. I'll share with you. Yes. Last two classes you were not there, no? Yes, ma'am. I'll share with you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Ma'am, before this, we did mirror formula, right? Before this, mirror, yesterday also we had the class, no? I didn't so, got any link. You didn't get any link for yesterday's class? No. Okay, I'll, uh, let, uh, mean, uh, let me know who all have not got the link for yesterday because students were there, Alan was there, I think Rehan was also there. From this. Sorry, ma'am. Sorry, sorry. I didn't saw that link. It was there. Okay, it was there. No, you didn't uh, see. Okay, okay, fine. I didn't join. I didn't saw. 
Okay, okay, no issues. I'll share the video lecture with you. So it was not a two hours class, one and a half hour class we had. Actually, tomorrow I'm not available. So tomorrow you all do not have your physics mm -hmm. class. Whatever schedule is there for other batches, that will be there at Learning View. But tomorrow my class is not there. Instead of tomorrow's class, I preponed it to Friday. So tomorrow you all are free at that, that time. Okay. Please share that class link. Uh, yes, yes, I'll I'll share it. I'll share it. Hello, ma'am. Yes. Ma'am, I have joined the first time. So... Okay, okay. Yes, Mariam. Yes, I just got the message that Mariam's first class is there. Yes, Mariam. So, what are you studying in your physics in your school? Um, they have also started ray optics. And... Okay, you started with ray optics. Yeah. So, see, Mariam, here currently we have also started with ray opt optics uh, last weekend only. Friday, Sat uh, Saturday, Sunday, you have your batch. Saturday, Sunday. And what is the timing for you all? Here it is 6 30. So, for you, I think it is 4. KSA yes. timing. Hmm. So two hours class. We have. Yes, ma'am. Send the time. Like sometimes it varies. Time varies. This is your first yes. time, no? Yes, ma'am. So today it was five. This uh, where do you stay? At which place? Oman. Okay, okay. Yes, yes. Oman time. Hmm. It will be five for you then. Okay, Mariam. So see, Mariam, we had started with this lesson, reflection we had completed. Uh, yesterday only we completed with reflection. There was an extra class yesterday, actually. Fridays, we usually do not have the class. So as I've told before, I was talking to Zets. So I was saying this only, that tomorrow, since we do not have the class, that's why I had taken the class on Friday. So uh, usually Saturday, Sunday only we have the class. But uh, yesterday we completed with reflection. Reflection portion from Ray Optics is over. So, Mariam, I'll get you added on the WhatsApp, WhatsApp group we have, because I'm going to share the links already for many students have to have their classes. So, complete entire ray optics I'll share with all of you, whatever classes we had in this batch. So, at least, Mariam, try to watch the video lectures. Tomorrow also will be free, available time will be there for you. Next weekend, we are going to meet on Saturday. So, a full week will also be there for you. So, try to revise it. Fine, try to see the video lectures. Any doubts you have, I'll take the class for you. If you want to take have a class, if you want any doubt session to be done, let me know about it. Or you can even send me your doubts on WhatsApp. Many students of your batch only have the habit of sending their doubts on WhatsApp. So that also you can do. Uh, otherwise, you started with refraction and refraction is simply the bending of light. Now, slowly, slowly, as you'll see, rest of the topics of refraction, I hope you'll be able to understand. Fine, Maria. Any doubts you have, let me know. Okay.
डायग्राम एंगल ऑफ रिफ्रैक्शन नो रेहान यस मैम यस यस राइट एंगल ऑफ रिफ्रैक्शन इज मेड विद नॉर्मल दिस विल बी एंगल ऑफ रिफ्रैक्शन Yes, done. All right. spell all have completed i hope if anyone is writing just stop me and scroll back anushka is also done no yes ma'am see okay now see refraction through a compound plate this part and the next part also that we are going to do both come in your theoretical part mostly you have to do you have the numericals as well the fraction through compound plate this usually comes as a proof in your examination cbse board examination mainly the question is to show that incident ray and the emergent ray are parallel to each other or angle of incidence and angle of emergence are same in this form the question comes that i'll repeat it once more before that let us see now what actually happens over here so compound plate means what compound plate means plate is compound plate you do not have a single glass slab like we have cases when we have single glass slab and through that glass slab refraction occurs but in case of the compound plate so refraction through this compound plate basically is made up of two materials two or more materials n number of materials can be given to you so if many met if many much materials are present different different media are there so then it means refraction will take several times Refla refraction will not take just only once because it is not just air glass interface no that only one time refraction will occur as soon as the material will change yesterday only we had seen this fact that according to refractive index because of the change in the speed of the ray of light the refraction phenomena occurs so right now also what will happen this is one material first material this is second material so as the ray of light will enter this is the incident ray now this is entering this is the normal perpendicular so at this point a this incident ray will what it will exhibit refraction phenomena why because it is coming from glass uh, air which is having a refractive index n1 air let's say or any material having a refractive index n1 coming to the medium this is yellow colored medium this yellow one whose refractive index is n2 so refraction will occur so let's say angle of incidence is i angle of refraction is r1 see this point is clear normal simple refraction till here now see what will happen this incident ray will not stop over here this refracted ray will not stop over here why this was coming if nothing was there it would have gone straight but now another material is present so as soon as one more material is present it means again a refraction will occur this time again refraction will occur so it means this refracted ray for point a this becomes the incident ray for point b so now this is the incident ray this refracted ray is the incident ray at this point b now see this normal is this this is the normal and this is the second normal for it both are pa parallel to each other if both are parallel to each other this refracted ray acts as a transverse so if this is r1 it means this is r1 so this will also be r1 
Why? Alternate angles. Because both the normal are parallel to each other. And this AB line is acting as a transverse. So if this is R1, this also has to be R1. So angle of incidence for the B point becomes R1. A1 had the incident angle of incidence as I. Now for the B point, you have the angle of incidence as R1. Fine, which was the angle of refraction for A point. Now coming to C point. Now this refracted ray will act as another point of incidence for point C. And R2 will become equal to R2. The second refraction, the, sec the third angle of incidence you can say. And finally, at this surface, because again, you're getting to the background medium, the medium with which we had started, because nothing else is present since this medium is there. So what will happen? This ray will get again refracted. So let's say since nothing else is there, let's say this is E, emergence. Why? Because this is the final angle that is occurring of refraction. This is the final ray that is getting emerged. Now, no other refraction is going to occur. So final ray that is present, no, which has uh, gone through several uh, refractions that you call as the emergent ray. And the angle that the emergent ray makes with the normal is known as angle of emergence. But this angle of emergence is actually not a new term because whatever you know, properties you have studied for angle of refraction, it is same. This is angle of refraction only. It's just that a name has been given. Emergent ray is there, so a name, a term emergence E is given. Now, this incident ray, the path that this incident ray covers, and the emergent ray that comes out of the compound plate, both actually are parallel in their paths. If you look at their paths, incident ray, if it did not su uh, suffer any refraction, and the emergent ray, both are parallel. Or to prove that parallelism between both incident ray and emergent ray. If we prove that angle of incidence is equal to angle of emergence, then definitely it will show that they, are, they must be having the same path. So to prove that, again, we we'll use Snell's law. What did I say yesterday? So many times I have said that Snell's law direct question will not come because Snell's law formula is very simple. But Snell's law application you have throughout till the last topic that we'll be doing, prism. Even till that topic, you will be requiring the Snell's Law's applications. Now, uh, at A, if we apply Snell's Law, C, refraction, again, all those who do not know how to apply Snell's Law, learn right now. Angle of refraction, uh, sorry, refractive index multiplied by sine of angle, whatever sine of angle is present. Fine. Refractive index, sine of angle is equal to refractive index, sine of angle. Refractive index, sine of angle. Refractive index, sine of angle. This is how you write. So at point A, this is angle of incidence. This is refractive index. So N1 into, this becomes what? Or you can even write down it directly, N2 by N1, because let's write it directly as well. You can write it in both the manner. Hmm. So at sine at point A, if you apply this becomes sine I by sine R one. Sine R one is equal to N two by N one. So how do we write N2 by N1 or N1 by N2? N2 by N1 is written like this. N2 is written first. Uh, first refractive index is written where the refracted ray enters. So this way also you can remember. And if you're able to write down this statement directly, then no issues. But many times, many students get confused. Then they end up writing N1 by N2 sometimes and just the opposite, whatever has been given. So for that, you can do the same thing. The refractive index multiplied by sine i is equal to refractive index multiplied by sine i, like this. If you, even if you cross multiply, you will get that equation back, or you can write this. Now at point B, when you apply, now sine instead of i, you have r1, and in, and here you have sine r2 is equal to n3 by r n2. Medium in which it entered, 
in, divided by the medium in which from which it has entered. So n three by n two. Then coming to point C, angle of incidence is R two, and angle of refraction is this emergent angle. So this becomes sine R two by sine E is equal to n one. This is the medium in which it entered, divided by n three. So n one by n three. Medium in which it entered first, divided by medium from which it has entered. Now let's multiply all the terms. We had sine i by sine r one into sine r one by sine r two multiplied by sine r two by sine e is equal to n two by n one into n three by n two into n one by n three. All the right-handed side together, I have multiplied, and all the left-handed terms I have multiplied. Simply. I have not done any modification in front of you only. Write this like sine two was there, sine e was there, n one was there, n three was there. Now, do you think see some things are getting cancelled? Sine r one, sine r one gets cancelled. Sine r two, sine r two gets cancelled. N two cancels this n two, n three, n three, n one, n one. What are we left with? Sine i by sine e is what? One. One. So sine i by sine e is actually one. It means sine i is equal to sine e. Sine sine is the angle of emergence and angle of incidence are same. Now I am repeating what type of questions can come. Either it can directly be asked prove that angle of incidence and angle of emergence for a compound plate is same. Either it can come like this. Or it can come that prove that an incident ray and emergent ray are parallel. Then also you have to show the same derivation. From here, numericals won't come. From lateral displacement, it can come. Note it down. Then we'll do lateral displacement.
Completed. Yes, Anushka. Uh, Ma'am, how did we get sin i by sin e is equal to one? Sin i by sin e equal to one because everything got cancelled, no? Here. N two, N two, N three, N three, N one, N one. Everything got cancelled. Getting cancelled means what? It's like five by five. That is one. So N three by N three, one. And from here we had a sin i and sin e. Understood? Yes, ma'am. So all completed. Can we move further? Yes, ma'am. Okay. This is uh, important lateral shift in glass lab. Basically, let's forget all the refractions that are occurring. Let us just think that oh, a single glass lab is present. Not a compound plate, not multiple layers, not multiple refractive indices. Single glass lab is present. Fine. If glass lab is present, there will be two edges of the glass lab from which refraction can occur two times. So here, refraction will occur only two times. But now, incident ray and emergent ray, the gap that is actually present, that we'll try to discover. See, this is incident ray. If there was not the glass lab to be present, or let's say the glass lab was not present, then this would have been the straight path of it. This, this would have been the straight path of the incident ray. If the medium was same, it was air. And this is now the actual path of emergent ray. So the gap that is emerging now between the emergent ray and the incident ray, this perpendicular gap that we are obtaining, this gap, this perpendicular gap that is throughout present, this is known as lateral shift in glass lab. So this comes as a derivation also, this comes as a numerical also. Numericals are not difficult. Firstly, I'll tell you from lateral shift, you will get just direct values. The questions are not difficult from lateral shift. So lateral shift, I hope you will be able to manage. Look at the derivation first. Derivation is there. Derivation is important. Though derivation is also very easy. Two-liner derivation is actually there. We'll discuss this. See, let's say this is the perpendicular BN, which I want to find out. So BN is what? This is only the lateral shift now. The shift that has occurred in the path. This was the path of incident ray. Now the path is this. So this shift that has occurred between the path, this is what we are trying to calculate. So BN is it. Now see one more thing, class. Look here. Look at this. This is angle of incidence. This, this is angle of incidence. Can anyone tell me what is this angle? This angle, anyone from the class. This is angle of incidence. Angle of incidence. Angle of incidence, good Asta. Vertically opposite angle, vertically oppositely angles these are. So this will entire will be angle of incidence. And this part, this narrow part was angle of refraction. So what will this be? This angle will be simply I minus R. Entire was I. And from I, I have subtracted this R. So how much is left? I minus R is left. Now see. Now see, it means from this triangle, in triangle A and B. If you look at this triangle, triangle A and B. This angle is I minus R, not I, not R, I minus R. Understood? Now see, if you take sine I minus R from here. So sine theta we have to take. That is the perpendicular by the hypotenuse. So perpendicular is this BN. Hypotenuse is this AB. So BN we have to find out that is the lateral shift. So BN will be equal to what? Bn will be equal to Ab multiplied by sine I minus R. Now, I cannot keep my answer or the formula in terms of Ab, no. What is Ab? Ab was just for our derivation purpose. Ab is nothing standardized. So, in order to find what is Ab, let's use this triangle in triangle AMB. Look at this triangle. 
Ah, yes, one more thing. The thickness of the slab that I have taken here is small t. Thickness of the slab. How much thick the slab is? This is small t that I have taken. This part. So now see if you look at this triangle, A, M, B. In triangle A, M, B. If I take cos R, that becomes base upon hypotenuse. So base is A, M, hypotenuse. Again, this is A, B. Now, can anyone tell me what is A, M by looking at the figure? What is this A, M? Normal. No, not normal. Normal is complete. Just this A, M. Normal will be above waypoint point also. Look in the figure, something else. T. T. Good. It is T. That is the thickness. So I have everything with me apart from AB. So cos R will be what? Cos R will be equal to AM is the thickness. Thickness by AB. So what is AB? AB, now I have got the value of AB. T by cos R. Now nothing is different. No unknown variable is present in my answer. See BN, which is the lateral shift, you can say lateral displacement, you can say is AB into sin I minus sin R. That is sin I minus R multiplied by T by cos R. And this is the entire formula for the lateral shift. This comes, this derivation comes in your exam. So do mark it as important whenever you do. This has come in your exams many times in the previous year. One of the, one of the good derivations that are there, that can come. And numerical also can come. But again, I'm telling numerical values are just direct. Thickness will be given, R, I will be given directly, it will be asked. No tough question will be there from this topic. Tough questions will be there from ray optics. You will have good numericals. But from this topic, you will have a, an easy hand. Right. Note it down. Any doubts you have, any difficulties you have, let me know. Um, yes, Asta. Mom, I joined a bit late. Uh, so, like the first topic for today was uh, refractive index only. No? Refraction. The refraction, uh, uh, the above one you were there, the just the division yes, that we did. Uh, yes, before that, we were doing a numerical. Numerical, no, last, uh, yesterday you were there only, Asta. So, you already know where we had ended. So, just a numerical on Snell's formula. Snell's law, we have it now. So a numerical was there. If you want, after this, I'll just show you so you can at least take the screenshot of it, of the question at least, or the solution both. Fine. Yes, ma'am, at the end of the class, you can hmm. show me. And uh, ma'am, also about like the exams, which were gonna be uh, held just like from November 27th, they're not putting like the full syllabus. They said that last three chapters uh, won't come. 
because uh, they are completely until November 17. So they are like uh, trying to reduce the load, I guess. I don't know. They aren't putting the whole thing. So the last three chapters, uh, they're it's Semiconductors is there, atoms, nuclei, these three? And dual nature, uh, yes, dual, yes. dual nature also. Dual nature also. Till wave optics only it's coming, ray optics, wave optics. Then in your school? I'm... Yes. No. But in the CBSE, it is still included. Ah, okay, CBSE just because. Is, okay, just yeah, because. Just syllabus exam. complete. Karne ke liye. Haan, next exam, so they'll put the whole thing. Abhi, okay, okay. Because they're just finishing it. Now, so they're like, leave it. You study like the old ones. Only properly. Wave optics. The plus the aspect. Okay, okay. So, exams are from 27? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay, they are from 27th or 27th. Fine then, your syllabus is now going fine. So wave, wave optics, but from here do wave, after wave optics, when we'll complete wave optics, here do complete all the chapters seriously. Because in your board exam, they'll be there. Right, yes, Asta? Yes, ma'am. Ma wave optics will also get over by like 27th. No? Hmm. Wave optics should get over. Wave optics because... Uh, if not, um, I think it will get over. November starting is only, it's 12th only, no? It should get over because uh, refraction through spherical lens, optical lens, yes, yes, Asta. Most probably it should be completed. If one extra class is required just for your wave optics, I'll take extra class so that your wave optics gets, gets completed by this weekend, or by this month. But by November, your wave, till your wave optics, it should be completed.
Mem. Can you explain the last step? Yes, yes. See, uh, is it, and uh, have you understood till here how BN is equal to AN? This yes, part, sir. this step, this step you have understood. Now, see, in this triangle, if you look at this triangle, AMB, see, this triangle is there. Fine, this is the triangle that we have. This is our. This point is A, this is M, this is B. So here, so cos theta, this is just, I have tilted the figure. This figure A and B, triangle A and B is there. Because now writing cos theta is easier. So cos theta will be what? Here you will be having it as base divided by hypotenuse. Base is your AM divided by hypotenuse, that is AB. So AM by AB. So cos R will be AM by AB. Now, AM is what? If you look in the figure, notice AM, this, this is actually the thickness of it. Look here, this AM is actually this thickness only, you know, thickness of this thick slab, whatever is the thickness. So instead of AM, here I have written it as T. Now, AB will be equal to what? T by cos R using this equation. In this equation, only AB was missing. No, rest of the things I had calculated, sine I minus R was there. But AB was nothing. No physical meaning AB had. So now AB is equal to T by cos R has been written. Instead of AB, I have written T by cos R and sine I minus R was already there. Understood? Uh, yes, ma'am. Thank you. Just text done when all of you have written. We'll start with the new topic then. So I think all of you have completed this, no? If anyone is writing, anyone has any doubts, let me know. Because this is a new topic, apparent depth. Though this is a part of your refraction only. This is not a different topic from your refraction. Part of refraction only. It's just that a new topic. Not simple refraction or application of snails. Though. This is simple, not very difficult. Simple questions come from apparent depth, direct questions, application-based questions can also come. A difficult topic as compared to apparent depth is your total internal reflection. Total internal reflection is the toughest topic of your array optics. Not because the concept is difficult or the formula is very heavy, no. The numericals that have come in your exams and the types of numerical that, numericals that come in your exam, those are heavy numericals. So that we have to practice from numerical perspective you, from total internal reflection when we'll do, I'll tell you. So apparent depth in comparison to it, it is a lighter topic. We'll see. Now, apparent depth and real depth are two topics. Apparent depth means something apparently, not the normal English term that we say. So when we say real depth, it means the height which, which is present in reality. For example, if I take a glass of water and I put a coin in it, so coin will be at the bottom, it will sink into the bottom of it. So the height or the distance from the coin at the bottom of the glass, at the base of the glass, to the surface of water, air water interface that is present, that will be the actual or real depth of it. Because that depth is present, no, where the coin is actually present. For example, if I say, This is uh, in a tub, let's say I have taken, I have put water. Now here, here at this point, I have placed a coin. So 
from this separation, let's say this is D1, this is the actual depth of the coin because the coin is in reality, it is present over there. But what will happen now? Your object is where? Now your object is here. So rays of light will emit. Emit. What did we discuss? Object is just a source of light. It's not necessarily uh, compulsory that the ray of light will come from the source of actual light, that is bulb, sun, something. Those are luminous objects. If rays of light fall somehow on the non-luminous object. So if we are we are able to see all those objects. So see now what will happen. Let's say this is it. Now some refraction will occur over here. This is angle of incidence. This is angle of refraction. Fine. Now your eyes do not see something that is bent. For example, I am using this laptop. I have the screen. I'm looking at the screen, so I'm able to see everything that is present on the screen. I'm able to see the, the students' uh, profiles that are there. I'm able to see the tools that are present, the screen, the writing part, fine. Am I able to see anything that is behind the lap laptop with just this view, with exact this view? No. Why? Because light is straight falling into my eyes. Also, light is falling into the laptop screen and it is getting reflected and entering into my eyes. But the light that is present behind the laptop, behind the screen, that will not bend like this deviated part and come into and then enter my eyes. No, because light travels in a straight line. That's why here also light will travel in a straight line. So it means you will see the image of the coin here. So even if you all must be knowing this, like if you keep lemon in a glass of water, you will see that the lemon is appearing a little shallower than what it, the, what is the actual depth of it. Same thing will happen here. You have put the coin deep inside it, but you will see that the coin is superficial right now. The coin is not at a very much greater depth. So this distance that has been obtained, now let me name this. This distance from the water surface interface form from the water air interface only we measure it. So from this interface to the image that has been formed, we take this as D2. So let's say this is O1, let's say this is O2, object two, but where is actually the coin? This is the real coin. This is the image of the coin. Why? Because these rays, our eyes will be here. So we'll be able to see this directly. But when you will come near it, if you will touch it, you will feel, no, it is going into a greater depth. And when you look it in front, then you will realize that yes, it is not so shallow. Because of the light rays, we are able to see it. See one more thing. For the derivation part, yes, let's name something. So let's say this is A. Make this point as this is O already. Mm. Not this point a let's take this interface point as we this point this is a o2 let's say this is b fine see this perpendicular and this normal both are parallel to each other if this is i this will also be equal to angle of incidence alternate angle similarly if this is r angle of refraction this will also be equal to angle of refraction r Right, this is because of laws of refraction. And this is just because of the geometry that is present. Now, let's, if you look at this triangle, this bigger triangle, if you look here, A, B, O, 1. In triangle A, B, O, 1. This A, B, O, 1, if you look here. So sine I will be equal to what? Just this triangle. It will be equal to A, B. This triangle, if you notice, this bigger one. Understood this one. This, this, this. If you look at this triangle, A, B, O1. So uh, if we calculate sine I, this will be equal to what? A, B divided by O1, B. A, B divided by O1, B. Got it? And look at this triangle now. A, O2B, this one. 
This is equal to what? This will be sin R here will be equal to AB by O2B. Let me write it. So in triangle A, uh, B, O2, sin R will be equal to AB by O2B. Take the ratios, sin I by sin R. If we take the ratios of sin I by sin R, we'll get AB by O1B multiplied by this term will be there, O2B by AB, right? Sin I divided by sin R. So AB, AB gets cancelled. Now C class. This point A, this point B and this point A, they are very close to each other. Refraction is occurring. This angle of incidence is very small. A very narrower angle is there. So point B and point A, they are very close to each other. So you can replace point B by using point A directly. If I'm saying O1, B, if I'm saying this, this is O1, B, I can write it as O1, A as well. If I'm writing this as O2, B, I can write this as O2, A as well. Because what will be the angle? What will be the length? Let's say O1, B is some 7 centimeters. So O1, A will also be some 6.9 centimeters only because they are very close to each other. This angle is so small. So I'm replacing point B by point A since these are known as approximation points. So sin I by sin R. So it was O1 A by O1 B, right? O2 B by O1 B. This was O2 B by O1 B. So I can write this as O2 A by O1 A. O1A. Now have a look at what is actually O1A and what is actually O1B. So this is O2A and this becomes O1A. Now see O1A and O2A. O2A is the real depth of the coin that is present. Look here. This is O1A. Sorry. And O2A is what? It's the apparent depth that we are able to observe. So O2 is the apparent depth. O1A is the real depth. Here also we have to substitute the same thing. Instead of O2A, we'll write it, it as the apparent depth. Instead of O1A, we'll write this. See, O2A is the apparent depth. O1A is the real depth. So sine I by sine R becomes what? Sine I by sine R becomes equal to apparent depth by the real depth. This formula, if you see anywhere, you can use it. You can utilize this formula. But we have a simpler formula than this. Snell's law we did, where we had seen what? In case of Snell's law, we had seen sine i by sine r is 1 by n. Yesterday, we had seen this Snell's law. So I can write this also apparent depth by real depth. This is equal to 1 by n. So formula of apparent depth becomes what? Apparent depth is whatever is the real depth given divided by the refractive index. This is the formula. Formula will be used. If you get the derivation, write down these steps as it is. As it is, write down these steps. But the formula will be D apparent is D real divided by whatever is the refractive index of that material. One more thing. This, are you able to notice that there is a gap now? This was the original length and this is now the length. It means this, this gap, are you able to see within the length from the object O1, O2? This is known as shift. So shift means the real depth minus apparent depth. Real depth minus apparent depth gives you the shift. How much shift has occurred in the distance of the image? Even if it is increasing or decreasing, that is a separate thing. But apparent depth and real depth, the difference between them, that gives you the shift, whatever amount is left. This was the real depth from here. This much portion has been taken. So this much part was left. This becomes the shift. So here shift will be equal to what? 
So shift is actually equal to what? Shift is equal to real depth minus apparent depth. This is what the shift is equal to. Now D real, keep it as it is. D apparent, just now the formula I had written, D real by N. So this becomes real depth shifts formula becomes what? Real depth, one minus one by N. This is the formula. Um, what is e? N is refractive index. N is refractive index of that material. Yesterday you were not there. That's why you must be having difficulty in it. Refractive index of the material. Refractive index basically tells you the optical density of a material. How much a light can be observed? How much one glass material is different from another glass material? So every material will be having its optical density. The way we have normal density, no linear density, which we have mass by volume. Same thing you will be, you have optical density for every glass, for every prism, for every glass slab, you have any material. For different material, air, you have refractive index, glass, water, kerosene oil anything that is present air refractive index is one so snell's law basically said that yesterday we did that sine i by sine r here this is angle of refraction not angle of reflection this is equal to refractive index of the material into which the light is falling divided by the refractive index of the material from which the light has entered from there only we did all these things a bit clearer say now Yes, ma'am. Now, okay. note down these. Okay, two more points, two more points, two important points before we start with the numerical. C class, if the light rays enter from denser to rarer, and one more thing, class, who were not there yesterday, denser we say, but the materials which have a greater optical density. Like if I say uh, glass and air. So, air's refractive index is one, but glass's refractive index is 1.5. So I'll say air is denser than glass, or uh, I will say uh, glass is denser than air, and air is rarer than glass, like this. Materials which have a less optical density, less refractive index, those are known as rarer objects, and materials that have a higher density, higher optical density, those are known as denser objects. So if the light ray travels from a denser to rarer, let's say from oil to air, or from water to glass, like from a denser to rarer, um, medium, the light rays are falling. Then your real depth will be greater than apparent depth. Like the example which I had taken right now, that coin and glass example. Water is denser, air is rarer. So from denser to rarer, the light rays went. No, from the water, the light rays went into the glass. So denser to rarer. Did you notice real depth was greater? Apparent depth was smaller. You were able to observe coin at a shallower distance. If just this was the opposite case, no, rarer to denser had it been occurred, then apparent depth becomes greater than real depth. It means if this is the real depth, you will see the object at a lower distance, at a bottom distance. So the depth will increase for you. The apparent depth increases when you look at it. So these two points are important from your theory questions, these two points. And rest numericals are there, we'll see. Note it down, note down this derivation. Diagram this part. This diagram, Razan? Yes, ma'am. See, Razan. Here, this was the object kept. O1 is the object. Now, light rays are moving from this water because now this is the source of light that is the object. So, light rays will go here at this interface. Water air interface medium is changing. So, refraction will occur. Now, if you produce the refracted ray that is entering your eyes, you will be able to see object at this distance. It means this is at a shallower distance. The depth is smaller than in comparison to what was the actual depth. So we are able to see this because light travels in a straight line, we all know. So this is it. And this rays, these rays fall into our eyes. That's why we are able to see it here. Now this normal and this line, this line, that means the line that is joining the image and the object that has been formed here, though both are parallel. So this angle of incidence becomes equal to this angle of incidence because of alternate angles. And this angle becomes equal to this angle because of corresponding angles. So using that only, we constructed these two triangles and bo using both the triangles, we got our formula for it. Now clear?
Yes, someone has joined right now. Uh, what's your name? Lashia? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so you have joined late. Now half an hour, 40 minutes are left just for the class. Okay, uh, mm -hmm. see, we are currently doing apparendum. Just now we have discussed it. So you also note down the points. Um, which chapter is it? Ray optics. Ray optics we are currently doing. So okay. the fraction part we are doing. So what is the lesson that you are doing in school? Mom, we finished all the chapters. The complete syllabus has been done? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so your exams are also over? I know, ma'am. Um, I think this month last, it's there. Okay, okay.
Let me scroll. Ma'am, what is uh, O2A? O2A is this, uh, the apparent depth where the object is kept. This here. This is O2A. This was actually O2B, but since point B and point A are very close to each other, so if you use approximation, you can replace B point by A. So that makes it O2A. That is the real depth, uh, apparent depth of the object. Means the object is not here. Object is kept here only. But since because refraction has occurred and light travels in straight line and that straight line is falling into our eyes, we are able to notice it here. Got it? Yes, ma'am. How is there any point where we where real depth and apparent apparent depth is equal? Real depth and re, depth and apparent depth will be equal when both the medium will have the approximately equal amount of refractive index. So there, what will happen? The angle of refraction will almost be equal to ninety degree. That case, you will be having it. The refractive index of both the material should be very close to each other for both of them to be seen.
See the apparent depth of an object at the bottom of the tank filled with liquid of refractive index is 7.7 .7 centimeters. It means apparent depth of the object is given to you. Apparent depth is already provided. What is the actual depth of the tank? So real depth, you have to calculate apparent depth is given to you. Refractive index is also given. So I think that's a very direct question. 1.33, 1 1.3 into 7.7. How, how much are you getting? Uh, just write down the answer in the chat box. Eh? Your voice was unclear. So apparent depth is given as 7.7. .7. The refractive index is 1.3. Now, uh, C, real apparent depths formula is what? Real depth divided by the refractive index. So, real depth will be equal to what? Real depth will be equal to apparent depth multiplied by refractive index, right? So, real depth will be equal to uh, 1.3 into 7.7 .7 centimeters. Uh, this, this, this is 10.01, I think. Uh, yes, yes, 10.01. Yeah, 10.01 centimeters. All right, not, note this down. Okay, uh, just let me know some papers are also left, no? Which papers are your unchecked or all the scores you've received? One paper I think in your batch is missing. missing. Anushka, you must be remembering. Yes, ma'am. I guess one. One yes, is left, no? One. Yes, is left. Okay. A class next week and we'll have a test on reflection. Just the topic reflection, not refraction. Not any of these. Just the topic reflection. So refraction won't come. The mid till the mirror formula. Mirror formula and linear magnification part that we did. That we'll take it. Um, Let's have it on next Sunday. Sunday will be good. Next Sunday will be fine for all of you. Next Sunday we'll have it. Yes, ma'am. So this question says that a mark is made at the bottom of a beaker and a microscope is focused on it. Let's say a mark is made over here. Microscope is raised through 1.5 centimeters. It means when we are looking at the microscope from this point, at this particular point, we are not able to see the image clearly. When we are able, when we shift the microscope in such a manner that the image is formed here, then we are able to see it. Microscopes, all of you must have used it, at least in 9th or 10th also. So those students who do not have mathematics in 9th, 10th also, you must have seen or used the microscope. So same thing will occur. When you focus it through the adjusting knobs that you have, 
fine focus is also there, gross focus is also there. So when you focus it using a microscope at a particular point, now you are able to get it. This is 1.5 centimeters. So to what height must water be poured into the beaker to bring the mark into focus? It means how much water has to be kept so that we are able to see this length. So this is what length? Real length and refractive index of water is given. See, this is the actual depth of the, this is the real depth, right? This is the real depth of the mark that is present. And this cross that we are able to adjust it through the microscope, this one, which we are able to adjust it through the microscope. This we are able to see it, that this is known as the apparent depth then, no? This is the apparent depth because we are able to see this. We are not able to see this. We are able to observe this mark. We are not able to observe this mark. So this is what, can anyone tell me what is 1.5? What is 1.5? Any physical meaning for 1.5? Yep. Uh, yes, Zed? Yep. Which depth? Real. The real depth is this. This is unknown. Real depth, though, we have to calculate. 1.5. Look in the figure. All of you, try now. This is the image. This is the mark that we see. Is so that this real depth minus apparent depth? That is shift. Shift. Okay, good. That is the shift. Because real depth is this, apparent depth is this. So what did we discuss? Real depth minus apparent depth is shift. This was just what was the trick in the question. Now this is just a simple formula-based question now. Shift is equal to real depth, 1 minus 1 by refractive index. Shift is 1.5 centimeters. D real is unknown, 1 by 1 by n. That makes it 3 by 4. So this is what? Uh, 1.5 is equal to D real, 4 minus 3 by 4, this becomes 1, D real is equal to 1.5 into 4. So you get 6 centimeters. All right, this, in this question, we just had to identify the terms, rest was formula. Basically. Note down the question as well as the solution. First, note down the questions. Question also you all have not noted, no? This is it. Then we'll start with just the theory part of TIR. Rest of the total internal reflections question, we'll do it in next week. Only. TIR is a very important topic. I'm again telling you, be prepared for total internal reflection. Questions from apparent depth are direct. Application-based questions can also be asked. Though. Why do you see the picture or the image of a coin that is kept within it at a shallower distance like this, it can be asked to theoretical questions.
मैम यस यस अनुष्का से मैम आई जस्ट चेक फॉर द टेस्ट द मार्क्स यू हैड प्रोवाइडेड मार्क्स फॉर ऑल द टेस्ट ऑल द टेस्ट आर देयर फॉर योर बैच यस मैम ओके ओके अनुष्का देन इट मस्ट बी सम अदर बैच मैम आई डिडंट गॉट मार्क्स फॉर द रीसेंट फॉर द प्रीवियस टेस्ट प्रीवियस टेस्ट व्हिच टेस्ट वाज इट देयर दैट्स व्हाट आई एम आस्किंग से सम टेस्ट इज देयर let me let me just check your group you're there on the group no sir yes ma'am refraction test ac tests i have shared on 6 so jeeva anushka astha ahmed imad razan then i have not shared any result some test is left uh let me see em waves yeah. em waves test you all have given just let let me see which one this was the uh, induction test we had alternating current test we did And this was a refraction test just let me Check it. Do you remember the date? Just let me know the dates there. It will become easier to tally. Please let me know the date. I'm not able to find the paper. Just let me know which date is there, because what I'm able to observe is that AC test only. So if you had EM with waves, just let me know the date.
done yes ma'am yes sir okay let's see just a smaller introduction of this total internal reflection then we'll continue this in the next weekend again i'm telling tomorrow you all do not have your class class was already taken yesterday so tomorrow there is no physics class the rest of the schedule whatever you have it here learn of you that will be present and now see here Let's say this is the rarer surface. This is the denser surface. Now this is the normal that has been dropped. Mm -hmm. So ray of light is incident from the denser surface and it is going into the rarer surface. Just a second. Now, uh, see, if a ray of light is incident, this is angle of incidence, this will get refracted. This is what is simple refraction. This is what we have studied. Simple laws of refraction, uh, refraction is this only. Now, somehow I am increasing this angle of incidence. This angle of incidence is increased. So this angle of refraction will also increase simultaneously. I am increasing this angle of refraction, uh, ref angle of incidence. So as a result, angle of refraction will also increase. Now I have increased this angle of incidence a little more. But where now the angle of refraction will go? Where the refracted ray, ray will move? So this grazes over like this and the angle becomes 90 degree. Mm -hmm. Fine. Now I'm again increasing this angle this angle of incidence. I'm increasing this more, more even that this angle. Now, where will the ray go? It has already grazed over it in the previous case, in this third case. Now, where it will go? It will come here only. And down. Yes, in the same medium. So, this is known as total internal reflection. Now, understand what has happened here. This angle for which the angle of refraction was 90 degree for which the angle was refraction angle of refraction was 90 degree this angle is known as critical angle so the angle of incidence in the denser medium for which the angle of refraction in the rarer medium is 90 degree this angle is known as the critical angle and here what has happened here exactly the laws of uh, laws of reflection will be followed everything will remain the same now here two conditions are very essential understand the conditions class class i'm again saying from total internal reflection you have you have theoretical questions you have numericals also you have application based questions as well and you have good tough questions from this section so that's why i'm saying constantly i'm saying do not ignore this topic. This topic is very important and please try to solve the numericals. Not today, definitely. Try to have all the previous backlog clear by this week so that on next Saturday when we start with TIR, you can complete the entire topic easily. Because when you will notice, you know, when you study, you won't find it difficult. You will say formula of lateral uh, displacement that we did. That lateral shift was difficult than this. But the formula is not difficult application application based questions are very minute over here so that becomes difficult to handle over here so tir do practice tir when we'll do so, but theory portion also is very essential so two conditions are there present for total internal reflection to occur first condition 
from where did the rays started? It traveled from the denser to rarer. So you have to have the rays going from the denser medium to the rarer medium. You will not have the rays traveling from rarer to denser at any case. If that occurs, you will not get such condition. So first condition, from denser to rarer medium, this condition comes separately to right. Secondly, this angle is greater than what? This angle was greater than this angle. And this is critical angle. So this angle is greater than critical angle. Once this critical angle was exceeded, then only total internal reflection could occur. Right? So for TIR to occur at any place, you have to have two conditions. Light should travel from denser to rarer medium. And angle of incidence should be greater than critical angle. And now what is this critical angle? Critical angle is the angle of incidence for in the denser medium for which angle of refraction in the rarer medium is 90 degree. This is known as critical angle. This phenomena where the reflected refracted ray becomes the reflected ray. This is known as total internal reflection. There are numerous applications of it. You will see. We'll discuss the applications as well. Now, coming to the definition part, at least definition until here you all can note it. Definition is what? The phenomena in which a ray of light traveling at an angle of incidence greater than critical angle, one condition, from denser to rarer medium, second, is totally reflected back into the denser medium is called total internal reflection. And what is this critical angle that was mentioned? this critical angle here. The angle of incidence in the denser medium for which the angle of refraction in the rarer medium is 90 degree is called critical angle of the denser medium. And it is denoted by this small i with a subscript in the, with a subscript c. Or sometimes you will find critical angle written as completely c. So if you notice c letter, no? then understand that, that this is uh, critical angle only. This is the critical angle, degree, whatever will be given. Sometimes you'll find it as C, sometimes you'll find it as IC. So note it till here, note down this part, then just text me done. I'll continue rest of the things on Saturday. From rarer to rarer medium will not occur, right? No, no, from rarer to denser, it won't occur because you will not the get, you will not get the critical angle. That's fine. So critical angle, if it is not exceeded, so to PIR will not occur. When you will get a theory question no, of TIR to explain it, this entire page has to be written with the diagram. Do not forget to draw it. Ma'am. Yes, say Anushka. Uh, Ma'am, uh, I had a couple of questions I want to ask you as I have a um, physics exam on Monday. Mm -hmm. Do one thing, no? send me it on WhatsApp only. I'll share it with you, the solution. So lots of questions also you can share. Oh. That also is not do. like a uh, numerical. It's just uh, your doubts, I to know doubts that. that you have. Yes, ma'am. Okay, okay. Say, ask me then. Ask me right uh, now. Time is already up. Other students can note it down. You can yes. ask me a doubt. Uh, so, ma'am, uh, I wanted to ask, what are the important derivations from the book one that may come? Uh, see, important derivations from your first chapter, if we see electrostatics. So, from electrostatic, Gauss theorem part is very important. The applications of Gauss theorem, we have it uh, for plane sheet 
is there all these things line chart infinitely long chart that part definitely do from gauss theorem from the first lesson yes uh, in your second lesson from potential capacitance der derivation from capacitors usually do not come if derivations from capacitance has to come then it will come that part if when dielectric slab is introduced with thickness the uh, partially filled conductor is introduced partially filled dielectric slab that can come from the derivation part it will come then uh, from your chapter 3 current electricity see from current electricity derivations um, are not so much there for current electric very important no you are asking otherwise anything can come in your exam any derivation can come even the simplest derivation also v is equal to i or any derivation can come but if you are talking about the important derivations so from current electricity you have the numerical portion as compared to, to the derivation part more than it otherwise you have terminal potential difference all these things are present but from the very important point if you say i'll say skip to chapter 4 then directly because in chapter 4 magnetics magnetism that, that we have magnetic effects of electric current there all the derivations are important from chapter 4 a lot of derivations come lot of derivations all that circle semi circle magnetic field at the center of a circular coil magnetic field at the axis of it all these points do come fine so these yeah. points are there yes so chapter 4 definitely do from chapter 5 the, the derivations are similar to chapter 1 dipole moment and calculation of dipole uh, potential for it uh, magnetic for magnetic field for axial field like equatorial field like this so that will be similar to chapter 1 all, only so if you see chapter 1 clearly chapter 5 will be you will be able to do emi i have already told you the derivations uh, because in emi you have very small small derivation so maximum derivation especially e is equal to blv this derivation comes a lot e is equal to blv this derivation is there uh, yes yes all those who have completed all those who are done so you all can leave alternating current you didn't say uh, yes yes i was i was saying no some students have texted whether they could leave or not so yes all those who want to leave you can so from emi especially this derivation e is equal to blv this is the most important derivation maximum times e is equal to blv this motional emf this comes to prove it otherwise the rest of the formulas no that we had seen in emi th those can come from emi you have the chances of coming and especially from emi do prepare induction if you even if you do can you can, see emi is a very short lesson though so emi to you shouldn't leave any topic but if you are talking about something important induction do it definitely learn induction induction is a very important topic from emi then coming to your uh, alternating current alternating current those from derivation perspective that half cycle and full cycle become very important half cycle of average value of ac, uh, AC for half cycle average value those are just derivation part because you do not get numericals from that so important derivation will be from them ac generators derivation is there but that is not so very important in comparison to the other derivations that are present in alternating current otherwise see numericals also again from ac uh this is lcr circuits and yes from resonance alternating current whenever you studying Uh, for uh, everyone also this is not just for anushka resonance definitely revised resonance the complete resonance definition natural frequency and resonant frequency we have so that derivation of the natural or resonant frequency so we get new is equal to 1 by 2 pi under root lc that derivation that derivation definitely do q factors definition more than derivation its definition is important what is q factor how it tells the sharpness of the circuit these points are important and em waves the spectrum entire spectrum learned by heart the electromagnetic spectrum let me share that table also with all of you now many students are added so now i can we share it with you all i'll just share it right now only so uh let me just share you so hmm, i've shared it so see from this even if you do not look at this table that particular table i have shared with you look into ncert electromagnetic spectrum please do electromagnetic spectrum and then the comparison questions 
Displacement current is not very important for all of you because it is written in your syllabus that brief displacement current is there. Though displacement currents, theoretical question can be asked in your board examination because it was deleted last year. This year it has been added. So have a look at displacement current, but electromagnetic spectrum do it first. First you do electromagnetic spectrum. I've shared the table with all of you as well. And for chapter fifth, magnetism and matter. Again, the table that is there for those. Um, let me just share with you. I think I must be having it. So again, that table that you have for it, which includes this, let me share it. Difference between diamagnetic, paramagnetic, and ferromagnetic substances. 